okay so just to further study about this we will conclude this session by summarizing the major factors which affect the ml models performance so every time you build any ml model you should be very careful in analyzing the effect of these factors which have a very significant impact on the end machine learning models performance okay so coming back to the concept of roc curve as i already told you what does roc curve stand for can anyone tell me what does roc curve stand for okay, so when we talk about roc curve it is nothing but it's, it's actually a plot and uh, when we talk about roc curve we never talk about curve but what we more talk about is we talk about the area under that area under roc curve this is what is technically very important for us to determine like uh, how well a classifier is performed remember this curve is used for ml tasks which are of classification kind of nature so whenever we go for classification i hope you recall we have two majors what are those two majors the first thing is something we called as tpr what does tpr stand for true positivity rate and we have something here which we call it as false positive rate okay let us call it as tpr and an fpr now when we say true positive rate and we when we say false positive rate i hope you know what exactly we mean by true positive rate and false positive rate so the true positive rate and false positive rate are also known by some other names can you tell me what are those if you are online here and uh, if you have followed uh, my lecture of confusion matrix or if you have gone through the moodle course Uh, there i have shared few documents can you tell me what are other names for this two positive rate and false positive rate or at the worst what you can do is you can uh, google and you can tell me the, what are the other words for this true positive rate and false positive rate can you tell me quickly i'll give you a minute can you search and tell me what is what are the other names for tpr and fpr because in examinations these words are very interchangeably used and i have seen often students do get confused whenever we change this name so that's why i i want you to find with what other name uh, tpr and uh, fpr are known as yeah so tpr stands for sensitivity and uh, what does fpr stand for fpr might not directly stand for anything but it is related to another concept called as specificity so sensitivity and specificity are two important factors uh, i hope you can uh, get those values let me see if i can show you what exactly they are so you will get them in um, confusion matrix i think if i show you the wiki page of that that is far better so you can see that what we exactly mean by sensitivity 
and uh, what we exactly mean by specificity. You can see that. Uh, so when we call it a sensitivity, what we are checking that we are checking the true positive rate. I mean, from all available instances, from all available instances belonging to a specific class, how many of them have been correctly classified by your ML model that decides the sensitivity. And since this is a ratio, it would be always in the range of zero to one. Likewise, we have a specificity. What does specificity stand for? It stands for true negativity, like of available all instances which do not belong to the class how correctly they have been identified by ML model that they do not belong to that class. This is called as true negativity, right? The proportion of those who do not have the condition. So false positive rate is, I think it's almost uh, spe one minus speci specificity something. So one minus specificity will lead to false positive rate. I need to check the formula which is one minus or specificity minus one, but false positive rate is always related to specificity. So in uh, examinations, people do ask you what is the difference between sensitivity and specificity. So make sure you understand this concept of very well. OK, and one more thing, whenever you apply sensitivity and specificity, this is applicable to each and every class. For example, if you're attempting a multi-class classification problem, each class has this value, sensitivity and specificity. So coming back to our lecture, what we are looking at is we are try, we are looking at true positivity rate like what is the ability of machine learning model to detect the instances belonging to the class correctly and what is the uh, like see when we talk about false positive rate i want to see how badly the how badly the ml model is classifying instances which do not belong to class as they belong to the class. This is called false positive rate, true positive rate and false positive. True positive means some, uh, some instances which are positive have been identified positive. False positive means they do not belong to class, but they have been uh, identified as they belong to that class. So we get these two rates. So what we have is here, we have a zero and this tends to one and here as and when we increase it it tends to one so if i say i have a true positivity rate and if i have a false positivity rate what value i expect for two positivity rate as a good ml model what we expect the tpr to be and what we expect the fpr to be so if i want a good machine learning model i'm, I'm doing a classification so what are the classifier which you have built? What do you expect? You expect that to have high TPR or low TPR? Yeah, what we expected, we always expect the classifier to have high true positivity rate. It means that we expect that classifier to have a low FPR. I mean, low false positive rate. So now when we are working on this, when, when, when we are plotting on this, what we do is, uh, remember, when your classifiers, they predict the class label. For example, let us suppose, let us recall our student grade prediction problem. So when we were working on the student grade prediction problems, we had four classes, 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, and 15 to 20. So when I say your machine learning model is trying to predict a class label for given instance, what do you think? Will they predict that they belong to so and so? Remember, most classifiers work on the concept of probability. For example, we had a five classes there. OK, uh, no, it's not five. We had a four classes, 0 to 5. Let me see. So we had four classes, 0 to 5. Uh, 5 to 10, 10 to 15. We are talking about the last lectures problem where we were doing student grade prediction. And another class was with a label 15 to 20. So we have received one instance i. And uh, I want to predict to what. Uh, so my ML model, 
if it predicts that this instance i belongs to this class. Let us suppose my classifier is predicted that it belongs to this class, right? So when I say classifier is predicted that 10 this i, the new instance i belongs to this class, what does it mean? How does it say that it belongs to that class? Will it output a label called 10 to 15? Will it output 5 to 10? It will not output this. It will not store this mapping. What it does, what this ML model does, ML model gives a, a set of values. Okay. It gives a set of values and it will contain four values inside that. So how many we have four classes, so it will contain four values. First one, let us say it is uh, 0.2. It has given a value of 0.2. And uh, the second one, it has given a, for example, let us say 0.1. And uh, third value, let us suppose it has given 0.6, 0 0.6. And uh, last value is 0 0.1. Okay, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.6 and 0 0.1. What does this value sum to? Can you guess to what value this sum to? These values sum to 1. So I hope now you are trying to guess like what values they are. Can you guess what values they are? All these values sum to 1. And uh, if I give you additional value that this sum will never exceed 1 or this sum will never be less than 0. These values will never be negative values and any one value in this, it cannot be more than 1 or it cannot be negative values. So can you guess what are these values? I gave you some conditions what these values will be. The sum will never exceed 1. Neither each of these values will be greater than 1 at any case. These values will not be negative. These values will not be less than 0. So what, what is this? So what, what is this? Would you call this average or they are some they are representing something? Can you guess what exactly they are representing? Um, so as Hina said that TPR, NPR, okay, it might not directly relate to TPR, FPR, but what they denote, for example, let me write, I think it's, it might not be visible here, but uh, so as I was saying, what they were representing is, okay, what I said? Uh, they'll give you a set of values. What I said, it is 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.6, 0 0.1. I said this, these are these set of values. So as I said, the sum will never exceed 1. None of the values will be negative. They cannot be less than 0. I mean, when I said it is less than not negative, it, it implies that they're not. So what these values denote, they denote the probability or we can call it as likelihood. So whenever a classifier model go, gives an output, when a model runs and it gives an output, what gives it is, it gives the output as a set of values which indicate probability. That the probability that this instance i, the probability that this instance i belongs to class one is 0.2. The probability that this i belongs to class two is 0.1. The probability that the instance belongs to class 3 is 0 0.6. This is what I was talking about. The probability that i belongs to 0 0.1. Do you see this? So the probability that it belongs to which class is the highest? Class 1, class 2, class 3 or class 4? Class 3. So when it finds that it has the highest probability that this instance belongs to class 3 is high, then your ML model says that it belongs to class 3. That's how the uh, every classifier works on. It works on this probabilities, right? Do you see this? So why we are discussing this concept? Because assume that if you have built a classifier 
and uh, and assume that if a classifier predicts if a classifier predicts this kind of value instead of that above values if classifier predicts this kind of values for example i'll say um 0.3 0 0.4 i'll say 0.4 and i'll say 0.2 and 0.2 so if your classifier predicts this kind of values what is the problem what is problem with this so this was fine like it was able to give a good uh, high pr probability to this it was fine so what do you say what 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 problem do you see when your classifier predicts this kind of likelihood for the class labels what is problem with this so as per the above probabilities it has given a highest likelihood that it belongs to class 3 that's fine now you can tell that the problem with the second probability is that it has given a equal likelihood that they belong to class 1 or class 2 and assume that and assume that the instance belongs to class 1 so my classifier has learned that that there is a 50 50 chance that it belongs to class 1 or class 2 i hope you're getting that 0 0.4 0 0.4 equal likelihood then uh, what is the accuracy of that accuracy is 50 percent because it's saying that either it belongs to that class or this belong to this cl another class so with equal likelihood if you have equal probability 0 0.4 0 0.4 it indicates that the classifier is almost similar to random i mean when you want to predict uh, instance whether it belongs to class a or not if you say a if you say yes or no then it has equal probability so here here if you see in the in the second value there is equal probability that your classifier can say that it belongs to right class and there is equal probability that it can say that it do not belong to that so here if you look at this the probability of true positivity and false positivity is almost 0.5 so when you say that i hope have you understood this have you understood this probability concepts? How, how a classifier puts the uh, probabilities? Okay, so now that you understood the classifier's ability, so a good classifier will have a better uh, differences. What a good classifier does? A good classifier always has a better difference in likelihood. And this differences in probabilities is called as threshold. What we call them as? We call them as thresholds. So a good classifier will always have higher thresholds in between the likelihood that the class instance belongs to that class or it doesn't belong to that class. So what we do is and since now we know uh, what is the threshold what we do is it is expected that the probability has a uh, better thresholds or margins we sometimes we also call them as margin so the margin between uh, what is the 0.6 and highest other one is so 0.4 is the margin so 0.4 margin means it's a very good learnability okay so now that we have this i'll tell you what exactly what we do in on let me just clean the screen for time sake okay so what we do here is so for every classifier what we do is as and when we keep on training as and when we keep on training so what we say is that during this training the difference between these probabilities that probable likelihood that class belongs to that class and the probability that it doesn't belong to that class whatever the difference we have between these probabilities for each probability difference we calculate false positive rate and we calculate true positive rate so if the threshold is zero that if the threshold is zero what is what will be the true positive rate and false positive rate 
if i have a probability that there is no difference between the probability that class belongs to right class and class doesn't belong to right class there is no difference in that in that case what you expect the true positivity rate and false positivity rate would be so can you guess yes what is uh, true positive false positive they will be exactly 0.5 0.5 when the classifier predicts that the probability with which a class belongs is 0.5 the probability with which the class doesn't belong to that is 0.5 it is 50 50 so no matter how many instances you pass on through that model it will always give tpr as 0.5 false positive rate is 0.5 so when you do that what happens is for example uh, this will be one point this will be one point so you will find equal tpr and you will find equal uh, false positive rates so equal true positive false positive is this linear curve where it grows this so what it does it actually grows in this line this is the line where you find equal tpr and equal fpr right so if i consider this plot as a square if i consider this plot as a square now if you see that whenever tpr and fpr is same you get this line right these are the point where you get this exact line okay so now there might be some probabilities there might be some probabilities where for a few points the tpr is more than fpr for this point here tpr is more than the fpr right so we might have some points where tpr is higher than fpr okay so the we might get this so whatever you get this this is called one curve for some another classifier so one classifier is given you this line another classifier is given you this line so a best the perfect classifier the perfect classifier would always have this point so tpr1 false positive rate 0 but we never get a perfect classifier what we try to get is we always try to get a curves which are almost nearing to this point and they go to this point okay so these are the best points where i have so usually training stops or training has to convert at these points where uh, it tries to find a set of uh, it tries to learn a set of probability distribution such that it has a highest tpr rate and lowest false positive rate so that's where your ml models converse so no matter what kind of training what kind of cross validation what you do classifiers will always stop at a point where it finds that for a given uh, learned probability distribution if it finds the true positive rate highest uh, and the lowest fpr that's the point where your classifier start converges converges means that's where almost all your everything ends and your actual ML model always predicts from this point onwards. So now that you have drawn this curves, curve one, curve two, and curve three, and if you start looking at the area under this curve, for example, if you look at this area under this curve. So now, if you look at this area under this curve, how much is this area of this total area of this rectangle or this square? How much is this area? How much is this area which I have just uh, put with the zigzag lines of overall rectangle? Half of that square. So half of that square is nothing but 0 0.5. So that's why in the last lecture when I said that the R area under this ROC curve should be greater than 0.5. When I say area under this curve should be greater than 0.5, what I'm expecting? I am expecting that curve to be not to be straight line. What is problem with the straight line? It means that it, it says that the classifier will always have equal TPR and equal FPR. Is it expected? That is almost 50-50%. It means that random percent. So even if you randomly guess that values, you will get this 50% curve. So this is not expected. What I expect is, I expect always to be in this for example now if i consider this complete area this complete area is it greater than 0.5 yes 
it is greater than 0.5 if i now consider this entire area is it greater than 0.5 yes if it is greater than 0.5 then it means that there is a point there is a point where classifier has highest tpr and that tpr is better than it is higher than the false positive rate at that point so now i i can judge that yes this classifier has learned when a instance belongs to that specific class yes there is something that classifier has learned because it finds a higher tpr than the fpr so likewise if you go to this curve you will find this would be almost greater than the earlier one for example if it is 0.5 this is 0.5 this area may be 0.6 the area under this curve will be 0.6 and maybe area under this curve may be around uh, 0.8 right so what will be idealistic value the ideal value will be 1 the area under this square curve what will be area under this curve 1 into 1 is 1 right that's why we always look at the area under roc curve to be greater than 0.5 and it should be always near to 1. So any values which you get around from 0.7 to 0.9 and that, this indicate that yes, your classifier has learned an ability to predict whether an instance belongs to that class or not. So the, we always look for that. Instead of, instead of randomly looking at the number of correctly classified instances, what we do is we always see whether my classification has found any information relevant in the data set which are actually help ml model to predict if a, any random given instance belongs to that class or not are you getting so that's why we prefer in order to go for always in order to go for a good method to find whether the classifier has learned properly or not instead of just going on how many were correctly classified as not i will be looking at whether the classifier has learned the information from data set or not okay see sometimes even a classifier does some random prediction accuracy can go high but see this this always relates to that concept sometimes when you go, appear for mcq test uh, even if you do some random C, 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 you get some set number of marks. So should I consider that as a uh, good candidate who has done a study? So this ROC curve is like a metric which identifies whether student has scored because he has studied well or whether student has just scored because he has given some random guess. So in ML model, we don't want to rely on a classifiers which might perform well just randomly. It would be very dangerous to rely on such kind of ML models which might have randomly predicted a good uh, uh, accuracy for a classification. We don't want that randomness. What we want, even if the accuracy is less, we want classifiers to predict based on learning those uh, uh, patterns in the data. And a good measure to do that is to just look at the area under ROC curve. ROC stands for Receiver Operating Characteristics, right? In short, it is a plot between TPR and FPR. And this plot is based on the thresholds of that probability. And when we have equal threshold, we get a straight line. And we have a better threshold, we start getting this curve. And we always expect the area under this curve should be greater than 0.5, right? So I hope now have you understood why I said when I said that ROC uh, area under ROC curve should be more than 0.5. I hope now you are getting what exactly I'm trying to mean. Instead of byharting that concept that area under this should be greater than 0.5. Now you should be in, you will be in a position to understand why it has to be more than 0.5. Have you understood this concept area under ROC curve? Okay, so now that you have understood area under that curve, we have our two minutes. What we'll do is uh, before we jump on to concept of hyperparameters, 
I have already told you what are hyperparameters and parameters. Uh, I'll just quickly talk about factors affecting ML models performance. Now, before we talk about, let me uh, explain you about hyperparameters. I already told you what are parameters. For example, in case of linear regression, we say y is equal to ax plus b. And what we learn for, we learn for that a and b. No matter what you learn, we always learn for the parameter a and b. That's called as parameters in hypermodel. Now, when we talk about hyperparameters, these are the values which decide how the learning happens. But value of these parameters is always constant. Such kind of parameters are called as hyperparameters. Can you guess what, what, what we have used one hyperparameter in last uh, lecture when we were trying to predict uh, the student grade prediction? We have used one algorithm where we were relying on one hyperparameter. Can you guess what was that algorithm? Which I guess I think uh, we have used that. Can you recall what algorithm is that? That ML algorithm, which relied on that hyperparameter value? It was, let me see if you can guess. We have used something called as KNN, right? And if I'm not wrong, we also discussed about K means while clustering. So when I say KNN, I have to set the value for K. Only then algorithm works. So if k is equal to 1, algorithm performs differently. If k is equal to 2, we might get some different performance. So this k has to be decided before this algorithm runs. And this k also decides how the algorithm is going to work, how the learning rate and how the performance of algorithm can get affected. So what are these? These are something which is required for learning that data. Plus, these values do not change. But this k has a lot of effect on how the algorithm can perform. Such values are called as hyperparameters. For example, the best best example is KNN. And likewise, in even in clustering, we have the value of called as k-means, like number of clusters. And when we talk about k in KNN, it denotes number of surrounding instance based on which the mean is obtained or some metric is obtained. Okay. So these are called as hyperparameters. Many algorithms have some kind of hyperparameters. For example, the thresholds, the number of bins. You might not realize, but there are a lot of uh, configuration values for an algorithm before we begin with. In Weka, whenever you choose an algorithm, you apply default and you go run, right? But if you change those default values, the performance of algorithms algorithms does change. So those are called as hyperparameters. I hope now you understand what exactly is hyperparameter. Now, given that you have this understanding of hyperparameters, uh, we now we need to conclude what are those major factors which might affect the ML model's performance. So can you guess, can you name what are the factors which, which the ML model's performance is decided? Can you name them? You can quickly type on the chat window, then we will discuss what are right, what are wrong, and what are the major factors out of that. What are the factors or what are those aspects which might affect the performance of ML model? Uh, bias and variance, fine. They are something, see, bias and variance are something which you, these are the factors which are uh, result of training on ML model. See, remember what I'm talking about, even before I begin the training of ML model, what are those factors which might affect the ML model's performance? Bias and variance are something which you get during ML process. But there are some factors which affect the ML performance. So you have to take care of these factors before you begin the training process. Let me tell you. See, there are three major factors which affect the performance of ML model. The first and major is, these are something which we get it, uh, I think if you have uh, followed the Weka series, you will get that. The first is the algorithm. What algorithm you are using has a 
very uh, profound impact on ml models performance if you recall our weka one when i applied nav bias you will get you will see we had a 34% but when we change this to logit boost which is nothing but a uh, classification based on regression the performance jumped almost uh, 30 40% up so the choice of algorithms is one of the factor which might affect the ml models performance like it might it might result into overfitting it might result into bias variance and that might in turn affect the accuracy of ml model so choice of algorithm is very important algorithms have to be very carefully chosen what is second thing which might affect the ml performance is the data set right and when we talk about data set what we are exactly talking about is features and their types for example what are the exact features from which we are trying to learn and what are their types types in the sense whether they are numeric whether they are nominal whether they are string whether they are numeric values how they are distributed what is standard deviation average so the data set itself is something which always affect the performance of ml model a good example is during our weka series we found that we had a 30 feature sets right when i use 30 feature sets what was the accuracy how how when i was getting the accuracy when i used 30 features or when i was using just four or five features if you see when i used all features when i used all features more features means more model complex higher model complexity it means it will result into more overfitting or higher model pieces more tendency to overfit and higher variance that might adversely affect the performance of ml model right so the next major affecting factor is the data itself if you do not have proper data structured data set no matter what kind of algorithm you apply you will never get a proper performance and what is the last uh, which is majorly affecting one the last is the hyper parameters so there are some model configurations like this algorithms might require some settings for example the k the number of clusters some threshold the probability values what should be the uh, each algorithm has its different set of hyper parameters so improper choice of hyper parameters might affect the machine learning models performance for example when you are learning a k means and if you have chosen a k value as 10 for example k is equal to 10 and basically the data set ha has no capability to form 10 clusters no matter how powerful and how long you apply the k means training algorithms you will always get a poorly clustered uh, cluster segments right so choice of hyperparameters also decides the overall performance of ml model so overall performance of ml models broadly depends on this this three choices which you make before you begin the training what are those algorithm data set and the choice of your hyperparameters clear have you understood this and we have seen this effect in this week i don't think uh, have i uploaded week series on youtube mm, i'm not sure if i uploaded those week recorded series or that but uh, once this lecture is done i'll upload that but i hope we, if you have followed this uh, our week series you will understand that whatever the changes we were doing the primary changes we were doing is we were changing algorithms we were changing data set but we we didn't go much deeper into hyperparameters but we saw a uh, lot of cases where we looked at that a and b effect of algorithm on performance and effect of data set on that performance so these are three major and broad factors which affect the machine learning models performance so is it clear now have you understood okay so now i hope uh, you also understood what is that area under roc curve and why it is greater than 0.5 okay so that's it for this session and uh, i hope you are working on practicals and that i never uh, found any 
questions related to assignments in telegram group so i am assuming that you are working on that uh, if you have any questions or issues let me know there okay so that's it for this session i am good to end the session just mark your attendance you should be free to leave